Hi, this is Andre, and thanks for checking out Synthesivy. Synthesivy is integrating the wisdoms of history, based on fact and truth, into present culture. The roots being synthesis, history, and sophie, as in philosophy. Sophie, the Greek root meaning wisdom, knowledge. Today we're going to be talking about chapter 18, climate change. The International Governmental Panel on Climate Change published its 1,435-page report titled Climate Change 2014, Mitigation of Climate Change. Not that everything that they said 10 years ago has come true. Mitigation of climate change means reducing the sources of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Mitigation is necessary because the consequences of unchecked climate change for humans and natural ecosystems are already apparent and increasing, and the dangers of irreversible damage are significant. Many scenarios lead to substantial climate impacts, including direct harms to human and ecological well-being that exceed the ability of those systems to fully adapt. The planet as we know it is threatened. The energy supply sector is the largest contributor to global warming and therefore offers the most options to reduce greenhouse gas emissions stabilization of greenhouse gas concentrations at low levels requires a fundamental transformation of the energy supply system, including the long-term phase-out of fossil fuels. The International Panel on Climate Change issued a special report on global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius in October of 2018, which stated Limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius compared to 2 degrees Celsius would require rapid, far-reaching, and unprecedented changes in all aspects of society. One of the key messages that comes out very strongly from this report is that we are already seeing the consequences of 1 degree Celsius of global warming through more extreme weather events and rising sea levels. The decisions we make today are critical in ensuring a safe and sustainable world for everyone. The fast approaching and irreversible tipping points are visceral versions of a future that no policymaker would want to be responsible for. Limiting warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius is possible within the laws of chemistry and physics, but doing so would require unprecedented changes. End quotes. Climate change. How do we know? Well, the Earth's climate has changed throughout history. Just in the last 450,000 years, there have been five cycles of glacial advance and retreat. We began the last ice age about 7,000 years ago, marking the beginning of human civilization. But over the last 450,000 years, the CO2 level had not gone over 300 parts per million until 1950. And it's now over 400 parts per million. Hence, the hockey stick. The planet's average surface temperature has risen about 2 degrees Fahrenheit since the uh, late 19th century, a change driven largely by increased carbon dioxide and other human made emissions into the atmosphere. The oceans have absorbed a lot of heat. We have a top 2,300 feet of oceans showing a warming of 0 0.302 degrees Fahrenheit since 1969. That may seem small, but think of the 62 million cubic miles of water in the top 2,300 feet of the Earth's oceans, all of which have risen 0 0.302 degrees, and that is a huge amount of heat energy. Arctic sea ice has decreased 50% since 1980. And I recall as a kid, I used to go skiing at Mount Tom. I can see the slopes through the window right here. From late November to late March. That resort has since closed and we now get 
snow maybe two or three times a year with all the snow melting in a couple days. Global average sea level has risen nine inches since 1880. Which leads us now to extreme weather events. With the record high temperatures increasing the amount of energy in the atmosphere, as in over 3,000 high temperature records set in June 2025, the U.S. has witnessed increasing extreme weather events in hurricanes, droughts, and wildfires. So, global warming and climate change is a result of increased CO2 levels in the atmosphere, which result in global temperature rise, warming oceans, shrinking ice sheets, sea level rise, and extreme weather events and hurricanes, droughts, and wildfires. And as the International Panel on Climate Change concludes, scientific evidence for warming of the climate system is unquestionable. Here's one more piece of evidence. We call the graph uh, for the human population over time. Let's compare that to atmospheric CO2 levels. Over the past million years, the spike in the world population coincides exactly with the spike in CO2 in the atmosphere. The chances of that happening and being completely unrelated are one in a trillion. Hopefully, as a society, we will acknowledge climate change and try to mitigate its effects on the environment and society. Climate change is real. The only questions are, to what degree will it impact humanity? And what are we going to do about it?